when I was a kid, my best friend's name was Sam. We lived only a few miles away from each other and would hang out all the time. I remember that many times I would go sleep over at his house and he would also stay over at mine sometimes. Both of our houses were pretty average for the most part, although Sam's was a little bit nicer in my opinion and it was also a little larger. This event I'm going to talk about took place when we were both 10 years old. Sam and I went to the same school, and one day, late in the school year, I went over to his house after classes. The plan was to sleep over, and I was excited about it. I brought my sleeping bag with, and would sleep on the floor of his bedroom. So after school, I went over to Sam's house, and we hung out for the rest of the day. I don't remember much, but I'm pretty sure we just played video games and stuff. We had to go to bed at probably like 10 or 11 p.m. So I set up my sleeping bag and then Sam turned out all the lights and got into his bed. At his house, every single light was off and I didn't really like that. In my bedroom at home, I always kept a small lamp on in the corner that gave a little bit of light. And before that, I would have a night light in the corner of my bedroom. I just didn't like things to be completely pitch black. I really could barely see anything but I remember that Sam's bedroom door was open and there was a small light from something. I think it was maybe the thermostat. Anyways, I remember trying to fall asleep. Sam seemed to fall asleep pretty quick, but I didn't. I really wasn't that tired for some reason. I was lying there awake and eventually tried falling asleep, but after a while, I just couldn't. Sam's bedroom was towards the end of the hallway where the other bedrooms were. Everybody else in his family had long gone to sleep and the house was completely silent. But then, I thought that I heard the sound of somebody walking. I thought maybe it was Sam's parents or something. It was very quiet, because basically the entire house was carpet. So it wasn't easy to hear the footsteps, but you still could, especially when it was this quiet. I looked over and then thought that I saw somebody coming into view. I could only see a small part of the hallway through the open bedroom door. But then, it seemed like somebody walked towards the doorway. It was so dark that I couldn't see very well, but I kept watching. Then I saw much more clear, a man walking into the doorway of Sam's room. When I saw this, I realized that even though it was really dark, I could tell that it wasn't Sam's dad. I had no idea as to who it would be. I closed my eyes and didn't move a muscle. I was pretending to be asleep even though I wasn't. The man kept standing there for a little while. After probably like 30 seconds, I opened my eyes again and he was still there. He was just standing in the doorway and facing us. I couldn't completely tell if he was looking at me. I didn't move my head at all and just opened my eyes very carefully. I closed my eyes again and pretended to be asleep. I just hoped that the man wouldn't enter Sam's room. Then I heard the guy sort of walking away down the hallway. I really didn't know who this guy was or why he was here. I also didn't know if he was going to come back or not. As I laid there, I just kept closing my eyes and didn't move. During this time, I didn't really hear any more noises. I was really too scared to get up and wake Sam up or do anything else. Eventually, after I'm not even sure how long, I fell asleep. The next thing I knew, I was waking up and it was still dark out. Sam was tapping me on the shoulder telling me to wake up. After sitting up in my sleeping bag, I noticed that Sam's bedroom door was now closed. He then told me that there was a man in the house and the police were on the way. We were supposed to stay in his bedroom and not leave. Then we waited inside of Sam's bedroom and didn't really hear much. But after a while later, the police arrived and we continued to stay in the bedroom. After a long time, Sam's parents finally came and told us what happened. We found out that a man was located hiding in the basement. I guess he tried opening Sam's parents' bedroom and it woke both of them up. The man fled and Sam's parents called the cops. Then they knew that the man was at the other end of the house and Sam woke up from the noise. He then left the bedroom to see what was going on, and when he returned, he woke me up. I guess it was the same man that I had seen. I'm really glad that the man didn't cause any harm. I never found out why he had entered, or how he had entered the house. I slept over at Sam's house multiple times after that. Luckily, nothing like that ever happened again. One bizarre thing that happened when I was a kid was a sleepover experience that I had. It was back when I was probably about eight or nine years old. I just know that I lived with my parents and older brother in the suburbs. 
A new family moved into the house across the street and one house to the right. They had a kid who was my age, and I remember meeting him when they first arrived. His name was Jake. There were a few kids in the neighborhood that I would hang out with here and there. Over the first week or two that Jake lived there, I sort of hung out with him like twice. My impression of him was that he was pretty weird. He was kind of rude and didn't seem to like the same things that the other neighborhood kids and I did. There were a few games that we would always play, and I remember that when we invited him, he said that they were dumb. I don't really remember much else, but I just know that I didn't have the best impression of him. Then, one day, my mom told me that Jake was going to have a sleepover with me. I remember thinking, when did I agree to this? I told my mom that I thought he was kind of weird, but she said that he probably was just shy and insecure about moving to a new town. Apparently, Jake's mom asked my mom if he could stay over because she wanted him to make new friends. I'm not sure if he had a hard time making friends or anything, but I reluctantly agreed. So Jake walked over with his mom, and our moms talked for a little while. Jake's mom seemed pretty nice, but Jake really didn't. We went upstairs to my bedroom, and I figured that we could just play video games. I talked to Jake for a while. I don't really remember much of the conversation, though. Then we started gaming, and I was feeling a little bit better about him. He was decent at whatever games we played, and we didn't really have to talk much. We could just go on from one game to the next, and it's always nice to have somebody to game with. This was before online gaming was super popular, so multiplayer often meant having to actually have another person there in the room. At whatever time I usually went to bed, we stopped gaming, and Jake had a sleeping bag that he brought with him. Then I got into my bed, and the lights went out. The next thing I remember was waking up when it was still dark out. I was like half awake and didn't know what was going on. After opening my eyes though, I noticed Jake standing in my bedroom. He was holding one of the little Nerf footballs that I had. He then walked over to my bedroom window and opened it up. Now I was just laying there, still squinting my eyes from having just woken up. I didn't say anything or even move. After opening my bedroom window, Jake tossed the ball out of it. Then he walked over and grabbed another ball and tossed that out of the window as well. I really don't know why I just watched him, but my guess is that I was just so confused. That and the fact that I had literally just woken up from a deep sleep. Then Jake walked over and picked up my PlayStation, unhooking the controllers and other wires. I realized that he was probably going to toss that out of the window as well. When he was walking over to the window, I finally spoke up. I asked him what on earth he was doing. He then looked over at me surprised, as if he didn't expect me to wake up. Then he dropped my PlayStation on the ground right there, turned, and then he ran out of my bedroom. I was shocked. I got up and walked out of the room, and then heard our front door to the house opening. He had left the house entirely. I walked down and then I left the house to see where Jake had gone. When I got out into the front yard, I saw Jake sprinting into his yard and then entering his house. I was really weirded out by this. I went and got my Nerf balls that he dropped out the window. Then I went back inside and went back to bed. The next morning, I told my parents about it, who seemed to be just as confused as I was. We thought that maybe he was sleepwalking or something, but his parents never said anything about it before or after. For about two weeks, I didn't see Jake at all. I don't recall seeing his parents outside either. Then, the next time that I saw him was almost just as strange. One night, I was sitting in my bedroom playing video games like I often did. It was warm, so I went to open up my window to get a cool breeze. My window faced out the front yard, and as soon as I looked outside, I saw somebody standing in the front yard. I looked closer and realized that it was Jake. He was just standing there at the end of the front yard by the street, right next to the pine tree, and he appeared to be staring right at me. I kept looking at him for probably 10 seconds. Then, Jake turned and walked away. I didn't know what this kid's problem with me was. I checked out of my window several more times that night, but never saw him again. So, these events took place during the summertime. I was expecting that once the school year came around, he would probably be in my class. But his family ended up moving towards the end of the summer. I never did see him again after that. I still wonder why he acted that way and did those strange things. This is something that happened back in 2003. 
For some background details, I'm a female and was 12 years old at the time. I had a group of friends that I went to school with, and we would hang out together all the time. So one time, I remember I was at my friend Jen's house with a couple of other friends. There were maybe four or five of us. We were all going to be staying over for the night at Jen's. I remember that her parents' house was really nice, and they had this big living room. That's where we were going to sleep, and we all had sleeping bags, other than whoever would sleep on the couch. So I remember that we were hanging out, and as it got late, we were just watching TV and movies. Everyone else had gone to bed besides us by probably 11 o'clock. Now, I remember that a little while after that, another friend, Alyssa, that was with us went to the kitchen. The kitchen was next to the dining room, which was directly next to the living room. Alyssa suddenly came back into the living room really fast, and she said that she saw a man in the window in the kitchen. At first, we thought that she had to be joking with us. I mean, it just seemed really unlikely. But Alyssa insisted that she was not joking, and I thought that either she was serious or a really good actor. She was telling us that she saw a guy walking past the window and then kind of look in at her. One of the lights in the kitchen was on, but it was dim. Outside, it was completely dark, so it would have been difficult to see any details about the man. After a small discussion in the living room, Basically, all of us went into the kitchen and looked. By now, there was nothing. No one was there. We then gathered back in the living room and talked about it some more. We were trying to figure out why somebody would be in the backyard. Jen said that she wasn't aware of anything like that happening before. Eventually, we just continued on what we were doing. I think we all figured it was maybe a neighbor cutting through the backyard or something. And probably a couple of hours went by. By about one o'clock in the morning, We were starting to get tired and going to go to sleep soon. I remember that I was thirsty and I went into the kitchen to get some water. Right when I walked in, I noticed through the back window there was a guy right there. I really couldn't believe it at first. He appeared to be looking in and was maybe a foot or two away from the window. But I really couldn't tell any details about what he looked like or anything. I immediately ran back into the living room and told everyone. At once, I think everybody got up and started running through the dining room to the kitchen. But again, when we got there, the man was gone. We looked out of the windows of the dining room, kitchen, and even the window in the living room, but did not see anybody. We stayed up for at least another hour talking about it. Finally, though, we were convinced that the man was gone for good this time. Everybody went to bed, including myself. We all woke up the next morning, and Jen's parents were making breakfast in the kitchen. I remember that we went in there to get something to eat. As a few of us were sitting around talking and eating, Jen's dad went outside to the patio from the kitchen. I'm not sure where he was going, but when he came back inside, he said that there were a bunch of marks at the back door. It was as if somebody was trying to get inside. So for the next few minutes after that, we were all talking about the man that we had seen. It seems as though he tried breaking in, but luckily he didn't. This happened one time when I was sleeping over at a friend's house. I think I was about 10 or so. I had a really good friend named Jordan back then, and I would go to his house sometimes to hang out. A few times, I stayed overnight, and he lived pretty close to me. So I remember that one time when I went over to sleep over at his house, we were outside in the early afternoon. He lived in a pretty quiet neighborhood for the most part, but there were a lot of other houses nearby. Jordan's yard was fairly big, So we were outside playing some kind of sport. I remember that he had a neighbor directly across the street. The neighbor was a man who was somewhat thin and had kind of blonde, messy hair. I remember that when we were outside, the guy was just kind of standing around in his front yard and looking in our direction. Jordan told me that the guy always seemed odd to him. I didn't really ask why or anything. At least, I don't remember. So I remember that the guy almost appeared to be watching us, which was strange. We moved into the backyard after that because he was kind of creeping us out, but it seemed like that sort of behavior was kind of normal for the guy. So eventually we went back inside and were probably playing video games for the rest of the time. I just remember that when we went to bed, I was sleeping on the floor in my sleeping bag. I fell asleep rather quickly, but was awoken sometime in the night. I remember being wide awake when I woke up, so I just started looking around. Everything was dark and completely silent. The only noise was the sound of a highway getting an occasional vehicle off in the distance. 
I'm really not sure what time it was, but probably like one o'clock in the morning if I had to guess. Then I suddenly heard the sound of somebody walking inside of the house. It was like there was footsteps somewhere on the first floor. This immediately seemed odd to me. Things had been so quiet, and I knew Jordan's parents and sister had long gone to bed. I was hoping that maybe it was one of them. Then I heard the footsteps coming up the stairs and headed for the hallway that Jordan's bedroom was in. Jordan's room was at the very end of the hallway, so I could see the top of the stairs from where I was. As I was looking over, I soon saw a man walking up. He was moving pretty slowly, but I soon recognized that it was Jordan's neighbor from across the street. As soon as I saw this, I knew that I had to do something. Jordan's door had been opened for some reason, and I quickly left my sleeping bag, ran over to the door, and closed it. I then realized that there was actually a lock on his door, so I locked it. I heard the man walking down the hallway on the other side, and he seemed to be making a beeline for Jordan's room. I went over to Jordan's bed and shook him to wake him up. I then told him that I saw his neighbor inside the house. It was at about this time that the neighbor guy tried opening Jordan's bedroom door. With it being locked, it wouldn't open. Jordan was immediately just as scared as I was. We really didn't know what to do. There was no phone in Jordan's room, so we couldn't call the police. After trying the door a couple of times, the man stopped, and things were quiet for a few moments, but we did not hear him walk away. Then we heard this noise at the door. It sounded like the neighbor guy was perhaps trying to pick the lock on it. At least, that's what we both thought. He didn't have a key, but the door almost sounded like it was trying to be unlocked. At that point, Jordan just started yelling loudly. He started yelling for the man to leave, and also yelling to call the police, and I then joined in after him. Hopefully his parents would hear, and they had a phone in their bedroom. We were yelling that there was a man in the house and stuff. When this happened, not only did the noises at the door stop, but we then heard the guy starting to move away. Shortly after, we heard Jordan's parents get up, and a door to the house opened and closed. Jordan's parents came to his room and asked us what happened. When we told them, they of course called the police. The man had left and was not at his house when the police arrived. We talked with the police for a while and let them know everything that happened. Well, the next day I got picked up by my mom and I heard from Jordan later on in the day that the police had arrested the man. That made us both feel a lot better. That was by far my craziest sleepover experience that I've ever had. This happened back when I was a kid. I was 12, and my best friend Ryan came over one Friday to sleep over. We would both hang out all the time. On this day in particular, he came over after school. That night, my parents and sister were gone at her soccer game until later, so it was just Ryan and I at the house. We were playing video games in the living room for most of the time. At probably like 8 p.m., there was a knock on the front door. It was really strange because we hardly ever had people knocking on our door. I paused the game and looked to the window. I couldn't see who was at the door from there, so I got up and walked over. Then I checked out of the living room window. There was some random guy there, and I had no idea as to who he was. I didn't get a very good look at him, but enough to tell that I didn't know him. He seemed a little bit sketchy too, so I chose not to answer it. I went back over to the TV, and Ryan and I continued gaming. The guy knocked at the door once more, but we still didn't bother to answer it. We hoped that he would go away and not stay there. Several minutes later, we hadn't heard anything, so I went over to the window to check. When I did, the man was gone. So after that, we figured that that was the end of it. Soon enough, Ryan's parents and sister got home. Ryan and I just kept playing video games, and we ended up staying up later than everybody else. So I remember that the later it got, the quieter things became other than the TV. I don't know exactly what time it was, but we heard this noise coming from outside by the window. We both turned around at the same time to look. When we did, we saw this man at the window. It appeared to be the guy who had been at the door earlier. When we saw this, Ryan and I both sprinted out of the living room from my bedroom. When we went inside, literally right after that, we heard the sound of glass breaking coming from the living room. It sounded like the man had broken into the house. We locked the bedroom door, and luckily I did have a phone in there. We called the police, and I could hear the man just for a moment inside of the house. But things got really quiet after that. He didn't seem to go anywhere near the hallway where the bedrooms were. 
The police were fast to arrive and got there only about five minutes later. The next thing that I knew, they were inside of the house. My parents and sister got up from the commotion. When Ryan and I came out of my room, there were multiple cops in the house speaking with my parents. I found out that the man had been inside and was arrested. He was located hiding behind the living room couch. It was a crazy night, but after that, things were fine. Of course, we had to get the living room window replaced. I'm not really sure what the man was after or why he chose to break into our house. I really can't believe that he broke in. I'm glad that Ryan and I were able to get to my room and then call the police when we did.